So it was um, quite some time ago I actually uh, did 3D printing. In fact, my channel started off um, January 2016 with some 3D prints. Um, I had um, a little bit of an idea that I was going to get into 3D printing watching other people's YouTube channels. Um, and so, um, you know, bought what was at the time one of the, the better machines out there. But I was really disappointed with the uh, the quality of the prints. It took me an awful long time to dial the printer in. Um, and there wasn't that many adjustments to make on the printer either that I had. Um, I'll link in the description down below some example pictures. And also talk about the printer as well. Um, but yeah, it was kind of um, yeah three years later. I thought, you know what, I'll give 3D printing a go again. But this way I'm not spending anywhere near as much money as I did this as last time three years ago. Uh, I'm actually spending around about 10% of that money. Um, and you can see it just over my shoulder there. Um, it's the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Um, obviously that's built. Um, and this video is about my assembly of the product and the first print. One thing I was really impressed at is the the way that it's all boxed and all the items that you get inside are very well marked the instructions that you get are really clear as well um, you also get the instructions on the micro sd card that they give you for free so if you're finding particularly um you know struggling with certain parts of the assembly with the printed booklet that you get um, then go to the micro sd card that uh, comes with the printer uh, shove it in your computer and you get more detailed instructions on the micro sd card but like I say, everything went together really well. Um, in total, it took me around about an hour and 45 minutes. There were some bits that I struggled with. Um, again, it's one of those things where if you've done this before, it's probably easy. I'd never assembled a 3D printer before, so I wanted to make sure I took my time. I followed the instructions really well, and anything that I struggled with, I went over two or three times to see if I'd done it the right way the first time, check it over the second time, and then the third time, hopefully, you know, it was better. It was, you know, the right way to do it that way. Um, and then basically just went through the whole process. It was a very tedious process at some stages that I got frustrated at. Um, and the other parts of the process were very straightforward that you didn't really need to read the instructions. You know, it's kind of like self-explanatory. Um, however, I will share with you now the really kind of like problematic parts or the bits that I think that possibly I could have needed better help with at the time. So let's go over those bits now um, and just point out which bits I think um, we needed help with. So one of the rails has got a special kind of like marking on it. And you need to make sure that goes with the uh, the drive motor assembly because it actually sits over one of the, uh, the bars there. Um, and then the two bolts inside can be more easily kind of like fixed in. But yeah, it's just a bit of a tricky one. Just make sure you get the part in the right place and then it goes together okay. Now it comes quite well assembled, but as you can see here, once you assemble it, there's a bit of plate on the uh, the chucks on the wheels that go across the uh, you know the rails. Um, so you get this little spanner. The spanner moves the nut, which moves the uh, the bearing inside and tightens it all up. Don't make it too tight though. So once you've perfected the assembly, just really go over everything, make sure everything's perfect, um, and then get all the cables out of the way. Now the cable ends are clearly marked, so you'll have a, a Z, an X, and a D, and an F. They're all the labels are marked, so uh, at the end of the cable, there's got little yellow things around it that says I'm an X, um, and then the instructions will tell you where the X goes into. But just move everything around, make sure no cables snag anywhere, and then button it all off, and then you'll be done. And the other one is to share the first print as well, so you think about it, I think it's quite a good quality. Like I say, the other printer that I had um, took an awful lot of time, uh, and I'll show some examples now of the the best print um, that the other printer printed, and um, you know the the quality of this one, and you can see then um, you know exactly why for ten percent of the price this is absolutely brilliant. So this Bender um, 3D print was printed on the Ultimaker 2. And as you can see, you know, it's quite nice. And that's probably about the best that I ever dialed it in. Um, but it's got all those kind of like weird shift pattern changes and things like that um, that 3D printers like to throw in now and again. 
Um, so that's kind of um, what I used to get as the best prints out of my uh, Ultimaker 2. Like I say, that was about two grams worth of printer. Um, this is uh, what the Ender 3 Pro has produced. And I think you'll agree straight away that is by far superior quality 3D print. And yet this printer is only 10% of the price. So really happy with that. Fair enough, I had to build it, but I like the fact that I had to build it actually. So um, yeah, I learned about it a bit more than um, I ever did with the uh, the Ultimaker. But yeah, this uh, Ender 3 Pro, very happy with it. Very happy that everything's coming out really clean, really crisp and clear. Um, like I say, in comparison to the uh, the Ultimaker 2 prints, um, which as you can see there, weren't great. So yeah, really happy with that one. So I can't really recommend this printer enough. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this was the, my first failed print. Um, and basically that was before I properly dialed in with the, the rails. Um, and all that entails is under there you have the, the wheels. And in the wheels, let me just put some light on there. So yeah, you can see the wheels under there. Um, and they just need um, a little bit of adjustment. They're on... Um, uh, fitment screws that allow you to uh, adjust them and it rotates them round so you can make them tighter or looser so you need to sort those out and again those there as well so those again the same sort of thing you know you need to make sure that they're they're snug but they're not too tight and they're not too loose um, and then once I dialed those two in so the that rail and that rail were dialed in um, the only other real adjustment I did was um, to the feed mechanism. So I've used uh, just a ruler strapped to the top, cut a bit of a V in there, so the uh, the material feeds in at a better angle, and um, the extrusion then happens a little bit more smoother. Um, and that's basically all I've done. Like I say, that one failed. You can see it started to shift at the top, um, but you know it was still quite a smooth print. Well, that was the first one, uh, and that's the second one, obviously, and that, that's perfectly fine. So if you've got any questions or anything like that, then um, ask in the comments section down below. I'll do my best to answer them, help you out if you're uh, struggling to assemble your own. There were some tricky parts um, through the assembly. Um, the belts... Uh, they were a bit tricky to get on and tensioned. And then the rails and the roller mechanisms for the rails, you need to get those um, snug but not tight. Um, and once you get those really kind of like dialed in, um, the print quality improves massively. So yeah, very happy. And um, some of the things that I have planned for doing, like making things and that, um, obviously I'll pop on the channel as well. Um, but this was just mainly an update of... Um, of what it is to build one of these printers, what it takes, um, and some of my findings along the way, you know, just kind of like point things out, little hints and tips. So thanks for watching my video today. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.